thank you for being here. Before I begin, I'd like to ask that you please turn off your cell phones um, or sign up. And um, welcome to my lecture recital, the final requirement for my degree, Doctorate in Musical Arts. Rome in the early 1600s attracted artists, intellectuals, and ambitious people seeking their fortunes from all across Europe. Like most non-Roman-born residents of Rome, Luigi Rossi came to the city to work. The wealthy Roman patronage drew innovative artists in secular and sacred music, especially when Pope Urban VIII, also called Maffeo Vincenzo Barberini, who um, was part of the Barberini family that became so famous and wealthy through the papacy. Um, he was an active connoisseur of both secular and sacred music. He and his family ruled via the system of nepotism that was in place at the time, and paid exorbitant sums to maintain an elite artistic retinue. Luigi Rossi was an admired composer at his time. He was also a keyboardist and singing teacher, as well as a harpist. And he married the harpist Constanza de Ponte. Saint Evremont called him Luigi, the world leader in his art form. Severo Bonini called Rossi and Francesco Cavalli the new swans of Rome and Venice. By the time of Perti's writings at the end of the century, Rossi, Cesti, and Carissimi were considered the three greatest knights of the profession. Luigi Rossi's Summer Academy was one example of an event that caused quite a stir among young virtuoso musicians. Um, the 18-year-old Atto Melani, who was there in Rome to study, sent by his patrons, wrote to his patrons, <coughs> begging that they met him attend this academy. He wrote, Signor Luigi is holding an academy in his house this summer, where all the best virtuosi of Rome will be. And, by his grace, he has included me in that number. I assure you that I will hear more on one of those days than in all the time I have been in Rome. <coughs> Today we will be performing cantatas from Rome in the early 1600s, probably mostly composed about uh, around 1620 through 1640. Um, the cantata is a Roman genre, and Roman vocal chamber music for the female voice is the largest repertoire of any kind of 17th century music. It surpasses instrumental genres and other forms of vocal music. Most of the music composed for female virtuose was recorded between the years of 1600 and 1640. Rome was the preeminent center for vocal chamber music in Europe. And while opera did influence vocal music, it was chamber music that played the bigger role in everyday life. It was the most performed type of music and didn't require as much rehearsal. Most of the pieces one finds collected in manuscripts are for high voice. And what survives today is just a small sampling of the repertoire of the period. Rossi's surviving pieces were mostly recorded in the typical Roman music copying workshop cantata format, in long and narrow two-stage collector's manuscripts with notation for the voices and basso continuo. In figure one, at the end of your program, you can see an example of one page or one folio of a manuscript. These were mostly not intended for practical use because so little music would fit on one page, so um, it would require too many page turns for a performance, but they were collected by um, patrons and mostly wealthy circles with elite musical interests. Um, they were distributed across the continent, and most of the pieces I, I examined for this project were in this format. Um, all of the ones I transcribed were in the format, except for the Latin pieces, which are all in English now. The first piece we'll perform today is the Exulta Jubila. This piece presented some challenges in transcription. Parts of the manuscript are illegible. Some of the counterpoint is impossible. For example, runs of parallel seconds, which doesn't sound very good. Um, and suspensions that did not function as suspensions because they were so far apart, um, they weren't overlapping. So um, you can see in figure two, a, a page from the manuscript or from the microfilm, you can see how hard it is to read. Um, the ending of the piece is all squeezed together 
Um, the notation is impossible for the time signature. Um, so, <laughs> so for my addition, I had to determine solutions that seemed likely, since if I copied the exact manuscript, I would have a piece full of mistakes. Um, for the most mysterious parts, Arthur, who's playing harpsichord today, was very helpful in coming up with the solutions. So thank you, Arthur. This piece um, required the most editorial creativity of the 10 that I transcribed. <laughs> now we will perform the piece.